This land belongs to us, there's, there's no doubt. I know it's been challenged by other countries. And they said, well, it might not belong to us. Well, it belongs to us. <laughs> To make sure that people understand this is Canadian land, you have to patrol it. Not only by air, but you have to patrol it by land and to occupy the ground. This patrol consists of six regular soldiers and 18 Canadian Rangers who are reserve volunteers. Most of the rangers are Inuit. <laughs> this year, photographer and filmmaker Leanne Whelan joins the patrol. Leanne wants to capture this threatened landscape before it vanishes. to do the entire route from Reservoir Bay up to Alert on the west coast. Never been done before by skidoos or by skis or by, uh, by walking or that sleigh. landscape surprises Diane. The north is not flat. It is a rippling desert of ice shards. Each team member must haul a kometic, a sled, that can weigh up to 2,000 pounds. in a canyon. People think that in the north uh, it's just totally covered in snow and it's actually the opposite. When you get up in the high ground all the snow is swept away and you're dealing with a lot of rock.
eight of the Comatex break. The team spends two hours of precious daylight fixing them. Fifty years ago, Comatex were sturdier and more flexible, made from sinew, bone, and sometimes even frozen fish. Oh, yeah? Just keep pointing it at me. So we are short of 58.50. So we have to be far. And if we miss that, that's mean we're going to have to go without it. We're going, we're going to kill people. Mm -hmm. Look at that. 500, 600 feet in less than 100 feet. Yeah. So we're going to do that. We have to follow that. Give me your GPS so I can move your GPS. <laughs> I was born and raised in an igloo. I still remember just about everything I know. Places we travel by the snow drifts and the wind. Today it's new technology, new GPS is coming out. I can't even keep up to it anymore. The Inuit rangers search for life-giving blue ice. Leached of all salt, the blue ice provides water for cooking and drinking. Sausage and hash browns. That's a that's a good one. Sausage and hash browns. Just be a little piece of that, Joe. That's tasty. Our job is to drop the fuel and uh, rations and whatever parts they may need, and also medevac uh, standby if somebody's injured or whatever. Up, uh, trying to push today. Uh, it's too bad, but uh, it's part of the game. 
Being a one-woman film crew demands initiative. Technology needs batteries. And they freeze in the cold. She unplugged my phone. Look at it. She unplugged my phone. So if we have an accident tomorrow, we cannot call the plane. But we can show the movie. <laughs> it was a group decision. Well, you thought it was all her. She did. <laughs> There's a crack. I'm going to start on something else. <laughs> Some animals are acting strangely. Seals molting or changing their furs at the wrong time. And all the glaciers, uh, they move back so far. Like if you look at the mountain from the distance, you can see the, where the glacier was about 10, 10 years ago. Like the ice nowadays is uh, rotting from the bottom. It gets to be dangerous for the hunters. Sometimes you get into uh, very thin ice with, without knowing it. Because the ocean is getting warmer and it's melting the ice uh, so much faster than it used to. It's changing fast. I, I live for short years and I can tell it's changed a lot. Yeah. Everybody started to come up north now, like 10, 15 years ago, there was hardly anybody in the south is coming up north. Starting with rangers and all the Canadian armies, they're going to take over the whole north. I realized that if I was going to sit there on my snowmobile and go, I'm going to die, then I was going to manifest that outcome. So just like that little train in your you know, childhood story tales, like, I can do this. I can do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this.
of the world saying, look, this is our land and uh, we have proof of it. Like this. this plaque, the flagpole in the base will be left there and uh, people will be able to see that where basically where Canada starts. 24 started out. Only eight will push on to plant the flag on the tip of Canada's most northern coastline. Deanne will record the mission. Alan is the scout. Paul is the expert in traditional knowledge. Doug, a history buff, hopes to find the cairn built by Robert Peary, who claimed he was the first to reach the North Pole. Derek is in charge of communications. Lazarus can repair any comatic under any conditions. Roger, the best mechanic in the high Arctic. And Chris is the leader. Excited for sure, but worried in the same times. Uh, the safety of my men come first, uh, and we will never sacrifice that for the mission. If it's not, we're not in a war here. We're not, uh, we're not fighting bullets, enemies. We are fighting the elements, and we want to make sure that we complete that in one piece. Trying to find an Inuit man named Harry Two there, Alan. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. 
south of the white out is not the same because you can look and you can you have references, you have trees, you have cars, you have roads and everything else. When you're up in the barren land and it's in a white out, every the ground, the sky, everything is white is like you're in a ping pong ball. Suddenly, Deanne realizes she is alone. Lost. Stop. But we don't see much the snow on the ground. 
because the snow and everything else. We are in a tight spot right now. Uh, it's not because of poor planning, it's because of poor weather. The plane flew around us could not land. We got one and a half, half boxes of breakfast. The delays have cut into their supplies. We are a little on the left now, and we are a little on the heel and ration. The team cannot survive unless the plane brings early relief. So the plane is as Tomorrow morning is better to live. And if the plane sees off from the ice, and if the ice permit, they will land. down the back side of this mountain and all of a sudden I look over to the side and there's my friggin cometic and it's about to pass me so I'm like okay go faster go faster but too late the cometic the weight of the cometic tilted my skidoo threw me off the skidoo and then the cometic came right at me and I just put out my hand to push it out of the way and yeah sprained my hand but uh, it Chris was told you to know not to do <laughs> Chris told me to get out of the way. It's a moving bullet, and I have no chance in hell if I get hit by the cometic. Why did you try to stop it? Because it was an water. instinct. It was an instinct. It was a survival instinct. By the way, for the people who listen to that video or movie, <laughs> she almost got killed twice by the cometic. <laughs> ago by Admiral Peary's expedition. It's even got the mileage on there. The north faces to the North Pole. North Pole, 400 miles that way. Nineteen twenty. Nineteen twenty. There's a sun. Explorers since Peary, who reached the memorial, like to leave messages for those who follow. And uh, we'll leave that in the ammo box with all the rest of the uh, messages that people left when they drove through that point. So I'd like to read it back. One Canadian Major's patrol group left Rizzitwood Bay on the 24th of March with three patrols of eight men each. Our patrol patrol number one, for the first time in history, drove with skidoos from Rizzitwood Bay up to Wharton Town. The elastic belongs to my daughter, so people can retrieve this. The driving conditions were good to extremely bad, but it was a good trip. But it was a great trip with a good team. Lucky us. All signed by members of the patrol. Traits 
a traveler's body and spirit. My grandmother, she was uh, half Mi'kmaq and yeah. half French. And she told me that my ancestors um, were there when the first boats came from Europe and nobody could see them. The only person that could see the boats were the shamans. Once the shaman said, there's something there, then everybody could start to see it. There's a lot of things like that in the North Spears. We have little people that come around all the time. When you can't see them, you can't see them. But when you see them, you can see them. I used to see a lot of those years ago. They start to go faster and faster and they disappear. Kind of weird, but that's the way they are. So it made me think that lots of times in life, we don't see what's right before us because we've never seen it before, so we can't recognize what's there. And the Salvatore Patrol is something that should be done every year because there's other people that want a piece of our Canada. We like to keep it the way it is. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 